Precious Jesus, we know that you are here. We ask that the cloud of glory be made available. We receive your presence, your person, your power. We receive your comfort and the mighty energy and force that flows from you into us, we receive it. We ask that you share and minister life and spirit with us. We cooperate with the Holy Spirit tonight to do the impossible things. Amen. Amen. The question that I have for you tonight is this. How are you going to achieve all the big things that you want to achieve? How are you going to achieve them? Let's say that you've tried before, it did not work. How are you going to achieve what seems impossible? In your lifetime, have you counted the costs? We have the phone line open wherever you are in the world. Call the office phone 316-665-4400 to participate in this. The foundation for what we are discussing tonight is based on Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Victoria, can you read that passage for us, that verse of scripture, of powerful scripture? Yes. Yes, the verse is, For nothing is impossible with God. Okay. For nothing is impossible with God. When he says nothing, it means everything. Now, I want this I want tonight to be a collaboration. I am just going to be a facilitator to facilitate and to moderate this discussion. Please, wherever you are in the world, the country code is the country code is one, and then you can put in the our office number three one six 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 five four four zero zero, and then you can call and contribute. How do you? want to achieve what seems absolutely impossible. All right. That is the question tonight. Because it's very easy for you to write down your list. But do you really know what that means? How do you intend to achieve what seems impossible? Your father couldn't do it. Your mother couldn't do it. They didn't achieve much. They are not known. They are known within the little circle, or you are known within the little circle where you are a local champion. Like David was a champion in the bush. But things are going to happen that will make David to stop being a bush champion to becoming a national figure. A champion of the nation. You have been a Bush champion. Only your family champion. Because it's easy to be. It's easy to give your family a little bit of money here and there. A little bit of help here and there. And then, and then automatically you, you, you seize power. Automatically you seize power. And everybody come and bow down to you. Have you ever considered how you are going to become a national or a global champion? Please, whoever is calling the phone, can you go ahead and contribute? Muted. 
Hello, who is on the phone line? Natalie from Tobago. Go ahead. Yes. Are you calling to contribute? Yes, I am. Then we are looking. We are we are listening to you. Here. Can you guys hear what is going on? Hold on, Natalie. I think the phone muted itself. I have no idea how. Hold on. Okay. All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. All participants are muted. What? All participants are unmuted. Okay. Can everybody hear me who are on the phone line? Yes, I'm hearing you. I know. I'm asking those on the phone line. You are calling the office phone. Are people on the phone line hearing me? Victoria, can you hear me? Can you pray star six? Those of you who are, can you guys hear me? It sounds like nobody's hearing what we are doing tonight. Wait, just hold on tight. Something must have happened. It's fixed in a minute. Can you hear me, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what was wrong? Why couldn't you hear? Okay. Continue, Natalie. Yes, I have been... Asking the Holy Spirit um, well, to really help me to know more of what it is that I'm trying to do. I'm sure he's trying to fix it right now. Uh, continue, uh, Natalie. Yes, I'm hearing somebody talking. That is why I got quiet. Uh, Victoria, please do not talk. Please just listen. Okay, continue. Continue. Yes. I've been asking the Holy Spirit to help me to know more of who he is and the role and function that he is to play in my life to help me to understand what it is that the Father and Jesus Christ requires for me to do in order to be successful. Okay, no, number one, so, do you know your assignment on the earth? Have you written down a list of what you want to achieve? Have you written down a list of what you want to achieve? We are not talking about the Holy Spirit here or God the Father. We are talking about how do you want to achieve the things you put down in your list? Hmm, I don't think you're aware. Um, what are you talking? Yes. Um, How many other people are alive? Just before All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. Continue, my dear. Yes, I have my list before me. Right? And what is important for me is that apart from having the list, I know that I need to be connected to the right people in order to be able to accomplish what it is that I need to accomplish. And this is why I've been asking the Holy Spirit to help me because even in business, Sometimes we align ourselves with I. Let me talk to me. Um, I have aligned myself in business with a gentleman who many months ago you had prayed for God to bring the right, to connect me to the right person who is already established in business to be able to help me. But even though that has happened, you see, I need to know what is my role and function even in the business of the car rental, the taxi business, my music. Okay, why don't you know why don't you know the role of your business when you are in business? Is that not the first thing you are supposed to know? You are in business, you're supposed to be the head of your business. You're supposed to be in charge of your business. 
So why are you praying again and asking the Holy Spirit to help you to know your role in business? Why are you doing that? In dealing with people, sometimes, you know, I have to be careful of what I say because when you're dealing with people, especially in business and money and these things are involved, it's, it's kind of ticklish. So I've had to really ask the Holy Spirit to, to really help me to know what to say. All right. So this is this is what it is. This is what it is, Natalie. What it is is that you are going back to look at your list and sit back at the drawing table and ask yourself, because it doesn't really sound to me like you really got it all together. I mean, you are getting you are getting something together, but it looks like there's a lot of confusion in there. So um, um, you, it's a very serious uh, thing. Let me ask. Let me tell you what. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, says, when Mary said, how can this thing be? And the angel Gabriel did not go into a long grammar like you've just done, uh, telling us the different thing about the Holy Ghost, the about God, the Father, your role, and all of that. No. He went straight and he said to her, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. I'm going to give you a person. I'm sending, so God the Father is bringing a person. God, God, God the Holy Ghost is going to play the role that he always play. And when he comes upon you, then the power of God will come upon you. Then a physical child will be produced. So what we are talking about here is not about knowing God. What we are talking about here is producing physical and tangible objects, creative services and product. Hold on one second. Oh, who is on the line? Who is on the line? Oh, um, in Victoria, I, the, I can't hear you on the, on the phone anymore. Okay. You know that? All right. Okay. It will be solved. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. okay. Uh is the person that is, uh, uh, are the people on the conference line, can you hear me? All right, people of God, please just hold on. This is, let me start all over here. Um, hold on. Yourself. Okay, can everybody hear me now? Is everyone able to hear me now? All right, let's continue. Okay, let's continue. So, um, uh, so Miss, um, Miss Natalie, this is not about prayers. I'm not talking about prayer here. I'm not talking about knowing God and all of this. I am talking about product, services, things that you want to achieve for your own personal happiness and also for the happiness of God. That's what we are talking about here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Good. We are talking about how do you want to achieve the things you want to achieve in life? Let's assume that what you are saying is, maybe I should help you here, that you want, um, yeah, uh, you, are, you are going to ask the Holy Ghost to accompany you on your journey in making uh, great decisions. And you are going to ask the Holy Ghost to help you to learn how to listen to the voice of God, maybe directly from heaven, or through whoever is your spiritual father or your spiritual mother. And whatever you want to do in business, you, you're going to go to that kind of a person and talk about it. 
and then find solution to it. That's, that will be one way of achieving what you are saying and not just going to those kind of people or that kind of a person, but also being able to implement to implement what has been shown you. So that's, that's one way of achieving your goals because someone like you um, or could easily be a Lone Ranger. So that's why you will need to consult and then put into practice what the result of that consultation. So that's, that's a very good point you are making, but it needs to be tidied. It needs to be tidied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, what you are simply saying is that you are going to follow the Holy Ghost. You are inviting the Holy Ghost into your business. And that is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there any other way that you want to um you want to achieve your 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 goals? Any other way you want to achieve things that looks impossible? None. All right. Thank you, Natalie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Who again wants to talk to us tonight? How do you want to achieve your goals? How do you want to achieve the things on your list? That, that those things that you want to achieve in life, how do you want to achieve them? who want to go, you can call in. If you are watching this program, you can also call in and share your thoughts with us so that the world can learn from you. 316-665-4400. All right. Let's carry on. One of the great ways that you are going to learn if you are looking for inspiration and you are looking for a way to help. Let, let me just put it this way. You, you are going to need to be inspired by somebody. Number two, you're going to need an earthly idol not to worship but to follow a human being. You're going to need a human being to be your hero, who you can follow as long as possible until you can use that the, the, the person's tools to make your own. And then you can stay with that person for life or you can branch out on your own. So that's, those, those are some of the ways you do it. Next thing is, be willing to learn from somebody else. If you are not going to be willing to learn from somebody and put into practice what you've learned, you won't succeed. Learning is so important here because you are as creative and productive as what you know. If you don't know, you cannot be famous or great. What you know will make you great. What you know will make you famous. So it's not just a matter of prayer and fasting, but we are talking about a matter of what do you do practically to achieve your list, your goals. There, there are some people out there who have failed and they are afraid of trying again because they failed already. And part of the reasons you fail is that you thought that you are very good. You thought that you can really achieve your goals by yourself. And you do not know that there is a place, that there is what we call the secrets of life. The things that will make you to become successful many a times are not in the books. Somebody has to tell you, somebody has to show you. Somebody has to bring you alongside him or her in order to introduce you to the circle of the rich and famous. 
and then tell them to accept you. Tell them to introduce you to the money, to introduce you to the power. But if you are the type that you don't, you have, if you have behavior problem, then that, that's going to suck. Because they will not be able to arrange for you to be in the society in the circle of, of the mighty ones. That is those who have already achieved what looks impossible in their own life, they've achieved it already. Next, if you talk too much, they won't accept you. So silence is going to be absolutely necessary. Silence is going to be absolutely necessary for you to achieve great goals in life. You are going to be silent and let other people lead you. Let somebody lead you. Let somebody talk to you. Next, you're going to be willing to spend money and time in order to be able to achieve the impossible. I'll give you an example. If you are not good at details, then it's going to be impossible for you to do, to, to, to achieve what seems impossible to achieve. If you are not used to looking at details. Now, if you are only looking for inspiration and motivation, you are not going to achieve much in life. If you are going to be looking at motivational speakers and people who inspire you, people who make you laugh, you're not gonna be worth. You're not gonna worth a whole lot because that's not gonna work. There is a place for inspiration. Inspiration is gonna be very little. A a, I mean, human being will motivate you, and you can call that inspire inspire you. You can. But the real inspiration will come from what you believe. Your God will determine the level of relationship with your God will determine the level of inspiration you have. Please write that down. While human beings will motivate you, your object of worship will inspire you. Now let me go to passion. If one of the one of the one of the two biggest forces in the kingdom of darkness and in the universe are the spirit of discouragement and the spirit that destroys your passion. You already know how to do that thing. You already know, you already got the knowledge or the revelation. But then you do not have the passion to put it into practice. Passion is one of the, passion and boldness are the two greatest gifts you can receive. You can, you can actually produce for yourself because those are not received. They are not things that God is going to give you. God is not going to give you earthly knowledge because it's already here. Boldness is something that um, you're going to make up your mind that that's the way you're going to go. Passion is something that you're going to produce yourself. It's like going to gather the wood and put in the in the fireplace. And then you pour the gas and then they are the kerosene and then you strike the match. It is you who is going to do it, not God. The Holy Ghost is not going to bring the firewood. Passion is you making the fire. Why? Because if you don't see a future, if you don't see a future, if you don't see success in what you are doing, your passion will die. And if there is anything that I myself battle with, because when once you got the revelation, when once you got the knowledge, the forces of darkness that will be sent to you is to quench the fire, to kill the passion. And that is also what happened in marriages. You begin to find things to complain, little things that you should avoid. You begin to, 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 to give passion to little things that are worth nothing. 
Others are out there looking for money, working for money, looking over documents, putting things together to create new things in science and technology. And you are quarreling over a glass of wine, a, a, a pack of cigarette, some dope. You're quarreling over sex. You're quarreling over money. And you look at what you're quarreling over, little money, few couple of thousands. Quarreling over maybe the wife needed something to buy some new, new wears. New shoes. You're quarreling over $35, $50, $100 worth of shoe. It's what you're quarreling about. Shame on you. While your mates are buying a $1,000 worth of shoes and handbags to make their wife to be who they should be, to, bring, to make them to feel good about themselves, you're, you're fighting over $100. How do you think you will achieve the impossible? Are you calling to contribute to this conversation tonight? Yes, I am. Okay, you've already contributed. You've already contributed. I need somebody else. Thank you. All right. Let's go on. If you allow anything to discourage you in life, you are finished. The years will just go on that quickly. If you allow anything, including marriage, to destroy your passion, your dream and your plans, then you are done. Those are the two greatest things that you should gather with all of your life. And this is not a spiritual thing. This is something that within you, you must decide. It's like in the cold of the winter, either you turn on the heater, or you make the fireplace, or you die of cold, it's as simple as that. So it's gonna boil down to whether you love yourself or you hate yourself. And for many of you who are so much interested in everything is a witch. Somebody is doing me this, somebody... Do you see wealthy people spending their life worrying about who is trying to bewitch them? Or who is trying to kill them? No. They are interested in how to make their money and increase their riches. That's all. And with that, the security is to protect those things and to protect your life so that you keep doing it. How do you achieve the impossible? Let's look at the spiritual side. Take God with you, period. Let God be... Let God be part of the journey. Anna, you can write this down for me and Marjorie. You see, Christianity must become a life you live than just a role you play. A lot of people do not achieve the impossible because they are just playing a role. It's not a life they live. If the job you have now or the professional career you have now or the business you have now is not exciting, don't worry about it. There are certain, there are certain reasons why you are doing the right thing but you feel discouraged. It's because the thing is not exciting. It's not, it's not something that is making you happy. For example, you are in school. You don't enjoy what you are being taught. How are you going to get the degree or the, or the certificate? The best things in life are not nice. They don't make you feel good. They are not enjoyable. And that is where you produce your own passion. Because what darkness another human being, including your own personal mind, emotion, body, is trying to do to you is to stop you. 
your, your human body, your personal, this your skin here, doesn't want you to strive to make great moves. It loves to sleep. It loves to sex. It loves to eat. It loves to relax. It loves to go on vacation. It loves to take it easy. It doesn't want to be stressed. It loves to grow fat. It loves it all. It loves to drink. It loves just to associate social media, just social things, but it does not want you to sit down, to stress it, and take it to the next level. That's why you can register for gym membership, and you are not in that gym, and the money is going on wastage. They are taking from your account, and you are not in that gym. Your body doesn't want to fast because it want to eat. It loves to eat. And that's just how it is. So if you are going to achieve the impossible, you are going to understand how your body works. That sometimes your body becomes the enemy. Your mind becomes the enemy. And then you don't talk about other people outside who are waiting for your downfall. And who are doing all kind of things to make you not to achieve anything in life. Watch out for people who comes to listen to you, to your stories. And watch out people that when once you tell them your story it doesn't take time, they think that you are trying to achieve crumbles. And avoid those kinds of people. I am not sure that Victoria, Victoria is listening to this conversation tonight. I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that um, those on the telephone conference line are listening. If you guys are listening, can I hear from you? Okay. All right. Let's continue. I don't know what is wrong with the phone line. I'm not. I'm not interested anymore. Just have to do what I got to do. After that, you can watch it online. The person that just came in now, can you hear? Can you hear my voice? Yes, I can. I have to unmute you. It said muted, and then I unmuted you. The answer. It says muted. Yes. When I, as soon as I call in, it says muted. Hold on, let me see. You. So then I have to unmute you. I have to press start six to be able to see. Hello, I, I'm on the line. Okay. I, I guess it was muted because I was responding to you. I didn't. You mean, so. I didn't mute anybody. Did Leila and just simply mute everybody? I don't know how that that happened. I have no idea. That's why I'm asking. Can anybody hear me? You press star six. Yes, yeah, hear you. Press star six, then you can hear. Uh, then you can you, you can talk to me. We can hear you. Okay, let's continue. Okay. So it's not just easy for you to say, "I am going to achieve this. I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to achieve this." Do you know how all those people have achieved it? There is a place where you play along. Because of what you want to get. There is a place for you to play along with those who have already achieved something. And for those who are too religious, you are going to find it difficult to achieve greatness on earth. David was not always a religious person. There were times he had just to become worldly. He has to say things that borders on survival, not a lie. There's a place for your secrets to just be your secret till you leave this earth. If all you do in life is just talk about you, talk about your secret to everybody, you won't go so far in achieving your goals. And also, if you are the kind of man or woman who do not listen to a leader, 
you'll find it very difficult to achieve your goals, the things on your list. Because I've discovered that very wealthy people, mighty people, have one person in their life that they listen to. Of course, I've also realized that a lot of wealthy people have their gurus. They have a guru in their life or they have a witch. I'm serious. There's a lot of millionaires and billionaires. They wake up in the morning. The first thing they go and do is look at their stars or they call. They call the person that is getting paid. They put those people on salary every month. And they consult in order to know where they are heading in life. Wealthy people do that. Sports people, entertainers. And all those things are done in secrecy and in covenants. You don't know about it. Money is passing you by if you don't know. If they know that you are somebody that is flippant, somebody that cannot keep quiet, when good things happen to you, sometimes you want to run and tell everybody, money will be passing you by. How do you achieve the impossible? How do you achieve the impossible? Is by knowing your primary assignment. You are not allowed on earth to do everything or to participate in every occupation. I'll give you an example. This, since morning, I've been doing some packaging of things people have bought at this living. Just mastering how to use the scales to do my own, because we have a, like a little post office here, to do my own thing. It takes professional life to know these things. Many things is going to require you to become professional at doing it, so that you do it over and over and over and over all the time. You don't do anything else than you master those things. And when the new way, the new type comes up or the new way of doing it comes up, you change and go that way. <laughs> if you are going to achieve the impossible, you are going to innovate. You are going to learn how to move with the currents, the currents of, of your time. What worked for your parent is not going to work for you. The more, the more people will get shot in their places of worship, in their mosque, in their temples, in their shrine, in the churches. The more people will get shot, the more people will not go to church. And where will church be is what I'm doing now. More people will be gathering in front of their computer, of their, of their, of their mobile phone or cell phone, or their tablet, or their iPad. In front of their laptop or desktop, that's where religion will be happening. And then maybe once in a while, people are asked to gather on a conference or a convention. Like we will be, we will have a big convention next year. Because you, you want to be alive and fulfill your assignment. You don't want to die and not enjoy life. Like today, some Sufi Muslims went to worship in Egypt, in the Sinai area of Egypt. And some, somebody went and planted a bomb and blasted everybody and sent them to hell. Is that why they went to worship? No. They went to go and pray to God. And you will ask me, why didn't God send angels to come and protect them? Because they, they are worshipping him, really? You don't know that there is a place for you to be intelligent. That's why before I walk into a church building, I want to make sure there is a police officer at the door. I want to make sure that there is a safe. I sit at a place where if anything happens, I'm out. 
nowadays i'm not really interested in 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 all these things i focus on what i'm doing next thing if you are going to achieve the impossible you are going to become a professional at your small area that area might not be it might not be something that your body wants something that you enjoy doing but you are going to do it and do it and do it until you become good at it and you stay at it and when the money begins to come into it and the fame and the wealth then your body will go along so every every assignment is not always very interesting because some 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 motivational speaker tell you about it must be something that you like something that you love something that you enjoy to do yeah but i can assure you of this many a times it's not so you have to you have to force yourself to do what you got to do if not you become depressed the only thing I tell people not to force themselves to do is be in a marriage that is not working, that is not creating the three things that you should be looking out for. Happiness, profit, and a future. If it's not, they walk away. I'm not, I'm not the type of man that believes that marriage is a do or die affair. I don't believe in that crap. I believe in human freedom. You should relate with you should relate with somebody who accepts you the way you are and be willing to improve. Don't just don't just allow yourself just to be the way you are. Find ways to even be better. Why a lot of marriages suffer is because one or two of the of the couple have outgrown each other in intellect, in money, in worldview, in material resources in the spiritual life you are you are running you both of you were walking and you are running and the person is crawling I, there are certain things that i do not manage either i have the fullness of it i'm enjoying it or nothing either there's a profit in it there's happening in it, there's future in it there's enjoyment in it. However, we should include number four thing added to that list. It should be profit. It should be happiness. It should be a, a future. And let's put the enjoyment there. Because you should be enjoying it. If you are not enjoying it, just forget it. Achieving the impossible will include these four. But many a times it will include... Sometimes some suffering, some struggles, some things will fail, and you keep doing it. You keep doing, you keep doing, you keep doing it. Even if it fell, even if it looks like it's not going to work, you keep doing it until you break into that zone. If not, if you do it one, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, and you feel that you failed, you failed. You have to keep doing something until you break out into the zone. If you are watching this, if you are watching this uh, broadcast, and you live in um, the New Orleans, the Shreveport, all, all the areas of uh, Louisiana, please give me a phone call if you are watching this this broadcast, because I'm coming to your area. I'm coming there physically. In the next two weeks, I'm coming to your area. Those of you in Louisiana and those of you in Jackson, Mississippi, I'm coming. So, so I'm going to send out a voicemail and a text blast to those of you who are in those areas. Mississippi and those of you in Louisiana, I'm coming. I'm coming to you the next two weeks. I'm going to tell you where I'll be staying, and you're going to come and consult with me. 
If you fail, it will show me how poverty-minded you are. One of the ways in which you are going to achieve the impossible is to break out of poverty mentality. My people say, hey, Jigo, Akbego. Hey, Ne Jigo, Emego. Hey, Da Akoko, Ebrako. Hey, Da Akoko, Ebrowem. We use money to play the game of life. You keep that money under your pillow until a thief come and steal it. Or you keep that money in the bank. The bank will be taking it. You don't know. You heap all that money. And the doctors will come and take it when you are sick. If you don't know what to do with your money, call me. And I will show you where to invest your money. Out there. I'm not talking of investing it with me. I'm talking of there are businesses out there that will protect your money. And then while you are sleeping, they are making money with your money. And it will come back to you. Not just the principal, but a lot of interest. Those of you who are watching this program, you are in Germany, you are in Norway, you are in Australia, you are somewhere in the world call in and tell us how you what 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 do you intend to do to achieve the impossible somebody built the city you are living at somebody started the country you are dwelling in somebody did it a man and a woman met slept and brought you out here somebody did it Somebody constructed this universe. Somebody built your iPad. Somebody built your, your tablet. Somebody built your phone. Your laptop. The electricity you are enjoying, somebody brought it about. Those people did not enjoy doing it, but they keep doing it until they broke into the zone and electricity came about. Until the plane flew from the ground and it fell. And it, and, and it, it sells through the sky. That's the language I'm going to use. I'm not using fly. Of course, it's flying, playing with words. Somebody put a canoe on the water. And it did not sink. And then somebody put a big ship. It didn't sink. Somebody then built a bigger one. With many stories on it. It did not sink. Tell me about it. That's why when I hear the devil tell me sometimes I should do this, I should do this, I said, devil get behind me, go to hell. Because there is a lot of people who cannot hear, who cannot see, who doesn't have hand, and they are billionaires. Are you serious? I should go and sit back and cry over, over things that I couldn't, I'm going to learn until I know it. How do you want to achieve the impossible? Anybody who want to go for it before I continue? When you, when you are ready, just pray star six and then you can talk. Are you willing to belong to a club? Not a club of talkers, but a club of achievers. There are people who just want to belong to where they will be accepted. What about being that way you'll be pushed so as to become a greater person? That's why people who do not want to be pushed cannot even stay in the military. They stay for a few years. They are out because they cannot stand being given a command, an order by somebody greater than themselves. There's a place where God want to do things for you. The Holy Ghost want to do things for you. The angels want to do things with you. But there is also a place where you'll be left alone for you to do what you got to do. Stop thinking about God coming to kill you because you committed a sin, because you did this. If you are a sin mentality, you cannot achieve much in life. 
if your religion is full of too much laws and ordinances and commandments, you can achieve much in life because you'll be living in fear. You won't be able to walk in life and into people's life and get what you want because you are full of fear of God coming to kill you. How many people in the Bible who have to do what they got to do to survive did God kill? If you go to a religion or a church that is full of laws, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, so many of them. Something that is going to be good, going to be good anywhere. You are filling out application form, they want you to fill thousands of application form, answer thousands of questions, go through so much. I realize that job that will pay you 10 bucks an hour, 5 bucks an hour, will go a lot to torture you before you get that job. And a job that will pay you so much money, you just fill out one sheet of paper, they tell you, go and do your physical, bam, you start your job. Bad things, bad things want to prove that they are good things. Why go through the torture? <sighs> instead of flying for, uh, for, for, instead of flying for one hour from here to Dallas or two hours from here to Chicago. You go to go. You want to go through a Greyhound bus? Are you serious? It's like going to buy pen. By the time that the Greyhound bus say you start out today from Wichita, by the time you reach uh, Chicago, it's like tomorrow evening or next tomorrow, depending on whether the bus will not spoil on the way or where they will drop you guys at St. Louis, you will wait, then they will drop you at St. Dad, then they will drop you at this, at that, and then the cold, and then you are sitting in the Greyhound bus station, you are sitting on like, those things are like plank, they are like iron you are sitting on, very painful on the butt. When I rode around America to see America for myself, I saw all that. I didn't like it at all. Because in the Midwest here, we don't have Amtrak train. We don't have Amtrak train. There's no Amtrak train in the South. It's like majority of the quality things are in the East Coast. The rest of the nations have not gotten any of those things apart from flying with plane. Other nations have very fast trains. New York have the sub, the subway. Where do you have it in America that you have those quality things? So people have to go on Greyhound and those in the Midwest, those in the South who do not want to fly, not me. God forbid. If you are going to achieve the impossible, you have to look for easier ways of doing things quickly. Some of you wonder, oh, why bought something from this man? Why is it that he has not? If I like you and you, you buy something and I want to send it, the Holy Spirit is consecrated for so and so numbers of weeks, then send it. That's a different thing altogether. I want to make sure because of something that has to do with you. That's why. But outside that, it, outside that, it leaves the same day you order it. I don't want anything that you buy from us that is not going to work for you, one way or the other. A woman bought our anointing oil. I told her, that she should go very early to her job. And she went, and I asked her to anoint the door of her boss. She did. Her boss came in that morning, the spirit that I planted in that woman's job, right there in Brooklyn, entered into her boss. Her boss called her. The woman did not ask her boss for anything that day. The boss just called her, I'm coming. Oh, uh, a few months ago, 
we were looking at this a few years ago we were looking at this for you and he started signing off on all those papers promotion vacation all that happened in one morning Because the, the glory came to that job. If you have bought any anointing oil from us, I want you to know that there is power in your hand. Yeah. Don't go about buying all kind of anointing oil from people, all kind of stuff. No, 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 no. That's a sign of lack of faith. You are living in fear and doubt. Don't be doing that. How do you want to achieve the impossible? Begin to find the right places where your money is going to work for you. There is a place where if you tried a particular professional lifestyle that you have and it's not working for you, you let it go. You try something else. Don't be doing some one thing for too long that is not working for you. Find something that is bringing you money. Another thing, those who want quick money will not succeed. There's a place for you to be and to work on what you're working on until the money begins to flow without ceasing, like oil. Be willing to change location if they need be for it. Be willing to abandon some people. Many of you live in fear of people you've known already. That if you abandon them, they are going to betray you, so what? They are going to say that you are trying to be like the John, so what? Move away from people that do not benefit you. Just move away. Is there somebody that wanna add some more to this? Please call the phone line 316-665-4400. Where is my Aunt Mary? Where is, where is uh, Anne? Anne, where are you? Daughter lover girl, where are you? Where, where are the big, where are the big, uh, where are the big fives? Where are they? Pray star six if you are on the conference uh, phone number, if you are on the conference line, pray star six and you can talk to us. How do you intend to achieve what is in your list? I have some items I want to add. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, I, I heard something interesting somebody said just this week. They said God is not going to give us anything because he has already given us everything. That's true. Um, Last night, I was reminded that my gifts will make room for me before kings. But what I have to do is work to perfect the gift every day, every single day, until it reaches a level of greatness where it's not me, but it's him working through me. Another thing... Now, let me correct something. Let me correct something. Since he's already in you, you are not no longer going to abandon anything for him to do. You are going to become a master of your own life and a master of your professional skills. God doesn't, God is not going to be in charge of your skills for you. See, here we are not talking about, because you are mixing two different things you have. You are talking, we, because tonight we are talking about physical services and products. But you are mixing the spiritual plus that. God is not going to be in charge of your children. God is not going to be in charge of your job. God is not going to be in charge of your money. God is not going to be in charge of your health. And angels are not to be in charge of those things for you. That's why he put you here. So that you can be in charge of those things. Because he's already in charge of you. Because he's already in you. That's why you can put your foot down. 
See, let me let me show you, Rene, from the world of wickedness, the world of darkness. When they go to Lucifer or to a witch doctor, a shaman, an astrologer, or whoever is doing that thing for them, making the, the, the voodoo for them, the juju or whatever, putting together that package for them, preparing them for where they are heading. Those people do not talk. You don't hear them talking about that they have gone to do those things. That's number one. Why? Those, those things, the thing they went to do is inside them. Or they carry it with them without telling you what it is. That's why a lot of time, men and women who belong to those things do not tell you. They keep it a top secret. And because they, or they know and they believe that what that guy or that woman has done for them is real. That's why they can now pursue their real estate. They can now pursue their television industry business. They can now pursue their gambling businesses. They can now pursue and become pimps and pimp all those men and women. They can now pursue anything. And they will now become positively aggressive to grab that power or grab that money in politics, in business, or in anything. See, we, we, God has told us, you are now in charge. But we went back to tell God, you be in charge. See, God already told Elijah, you are in charge. Elijah is running looking for God. And God came to him and said, what are you doing here? Power boy? What are you doing in the cave sleeping here? Oh, everybody has abandoned you. Oh, they want to kill me. God, God did not engage him. God looked at him and said, are you serious? I've given you dominion. You can do whatever you want to do in Israel. If you want to eliminate Jezebel and Ahab, can't you? If you are able to call down fire from heaven to consume the animal, can't you call down fire to burn those idiots? Can't you call down angels to deal with them and you are fleeing? Why? Why, why did God want to teach him the lesson that God taught him? And from that time on, his ministry began to fall. Because right at that point, the ministry was taken away from him and given to Elisha. Elisha. I'm serious. Don't try to make God the master of what he has already become a master in you. That's why when you read the Acts of the Apostles, you will see in many healings and many miracles, they never even call on the name of Jesus. They just say, get up and walk. This will happen to you. Why? Jesus is already there. You don't need to go and start holding a prayer meeting when the prayer warrior is already inside you. You don't need to do all those gymnastics. You read the Bible because you're looking for Jesus. The same Jesus you're reading the Bible looking for lives in you. You are only reading the Bible. Nowadays, you are reading the Bible for devotion and for business. That's it. Because the Bible is to lead us to the Son of God that was to appear. We have him. That's why the three Hebrew children were able to tell Nebuchadnezzar, if you want to throw us inside the fire, throw us inside the fire. Because we already know who is with us. Daniel did not go to go and beg the king and say, don't throw me into the lion's den because he already knew who is inside him. The question is, who is inside you? So that you can talk with boldness. People in the world of darkness, they are masters of this earth. Their own universe. And the sons of God are looking for God to come and be a master of the earth that is already given you dominion over. He's giving you a brain to learn physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, 
geography, all this, and you are going to beg God to come and read geography for you. Are you serious? To come and do addition for you. You are going to ask God to come and choose a husband or a wife for you. Are you serious? When he has given you intelligence and asks you, open your eyes and see whether you like what you are seeing. And we are spending our time praying for a husband, praying for a wife. And those who are smart enough walk right in and grab somebody and out they go. To heaven or to hell with everybody. I know what I'm looking for. All you need is the gift of sensitivity. Not the gift of prayer. When it comes to that, there are things that requires prayer, but majority of things doesn't require prayer. Because the one you are trying to pray to is inside you. It's with you. The Holy Ghost is with you. Jesus is in you. The Holy Ghost is, is possessing you. That's why ancient people can go to war. And conquer nations. If 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 you are of African ancestry, if you are an African American, listen carefully to what I'm going to tell you, and or Caribbean, listen carefully. Asians, the people from Asia, China, Japan, Korea, etc., they all went out to conquer nations. The sons and daughters of Europe went out and divided nations for themselves and conquered. The Arabs of all people, not educated illiterates, wanted a fatal land because they live in the desert where there is nothing. And they began to mingle with the West to learn. And they began to and they began to conquer. The only group of people that did not go out to conquer who were satisfied with food and drink and a roof over their head were people of the black race, people of African ancestry. Those are the only people. I am not on public television to tell you what God says about your race. If you want to know, you call me privately and I will tell you. Because this is not a time for you to play the game that your ancestors played. And to relax like they relaxed. Sons of Europe are not relaxed. Walk into the major laboratories of the world. They are out there. Trying to mix this chemical with this chemical to find a new chemical. Trying to mix this stem cell with these stem cells to find a new innovation. Trying to mix this with this to find new electronic devices. The sons of Europe are out doing those things. And some of the sons of Africa are now joining. And a lot of sons of Asia. Let me tell you, if you are not willing to be passionate and to learn, and to build on other people's learning, we will all be where our ancestors were. We won't go far. Go to Silicon Valley. There are two kinds of people at Silicon Valley. I'm talking on majority. They are sons of Europe and sons of Asia. People from India and people from China, Korea, and all these other small, small Asian countries, they are all there. Sons of Africa are not there. African Americans are not represented there. They may be, some, some few will be there, but I'm talking of the key players in the field. That's what we are talking about. So the, the quicker knowledge is what we want. And we are willing to pick other people's fat books and read them and make up and, and use it to facilitate our own and build on other people's knowledge, other people's revelation, the better we'll become. I'm, I'm very truthful to you. 
look at America today has been divided. The big skill spots that require a lot of energy is for the blacks. Football, basketball, all of that. Track and field, we are in charge of that. Music that is loved by everybody in every nation. Blacks, African American. Tell me whether it's the same in science and technology. Even going to do nails, the Vietnamese took over the nail business. The Chinese have their Chinese restaurants. The Mexicans now have their Mexican restaurants. And now they are building Mexican stores all over America. Where are the stores that are owned by people of African ancestries or businesses that we will be known for? Because the next frontier of human history is being built now. It's not being built by Trump government. Trump government will be relegated to the dust. It will be trashed. It's rubbish. It, it will go nowhere in human history. Because the history of America has been built up to Obama. What that guy is doing, Trump is the, is the end. Trump is the end of old time America and old time American religious racism. Some of the pastors you see today who follow Trump, they will also perish with him. Mark my word because I'm a seer from God. Because America has already gone into the next frontiers. Whatever he's trying to do now, he's, he's, like, he's like a lame dog, not a lame duck, a lame dog, D-O-G, that is trying to back but cannot even run. He himself is in danger of self-destruction, of self-implosion, an explosion that is destroying other people. Why? Because America has already moved forward. So whatever he's trying to do is doesn't is meaningless. It's rubbish. So that's not where you should be looking at America. If we move beyond that. Because there's a lot of Caucasian Americans who are also do not wanna do not wanna move forward. They do not wanna move forward. So I want you to be aware of this. There are people who are very angry because they fail to find ways to achieve the impossible for themselves. And all they have is culture and race, and that's all. They don't have anything. No science, no technology, nothing. They are looking for a way to steal. how to lead the country back to the 1800s and so on, or the 1700s, back, back, back. You can't lead anybody back there. And if anybody tried to do it, the country will divide into several regions or into two regions, mark my word. Because every Caucasian person I've seen, majority of them in the East Coast and West Coast are quite different from the Caucasians in the Midwest and in the South. You cannot deceive them easily. Every African American I've seen in the East Coast and in the West Coast are different from the ones in the Midwest and in the South. And this is for a fact. The Spanish speaking do not even know who to follow. That's the problem with with that culture. They don't know which group to follow. I'm serious.
They don't. And that's a sad thing. The ass is, is survival first. It's like welcome. That's why we should just leave them alone. Let them also, let them also grow. Because they have, they have something big to contribute to our civilization as Americans and as a global community, as world, as this universe. What are you willing to do? To achieve the impossible. Go and look at what China is doing. They don't believe in no God. They don't. They believe in their handiwork. Now the libraries that their forefathers wrote is now important to them. And they are willing to travel. They are willing to go places. They are willing to invest their money to make money. They are not interested in politics of nations. They are interested in how to be in your environment and sell you something and make money because they know that the, the next frontier is an economic frontier. It's not a religious frontier. That's why the Arab world will be left behind Anybody who thinks that you are only going to survive in today's world with religion, we pass the place where people use religion to play witchcraft on people. People want food. People want to be allowed the opportunity to manifest their talents, to study, to build on what they are learning. The next frontier is about the economy, about buying something, selling something, producing something, and selling something, offering services. That's the next frontier. It's not about church. It's not about the mosque. It's not about the shrine. It's not about the philosophy. We've passed that stage. The Christians who are, who are going to be used mightily by the Holy Ghost are going to be people in the marketplace. They are not people who want to live inside the church. You live inside the church, the church will kill you. Because the church itself is broke. The church spent so much money to build mighty buildings. Because in those days, the church was king. They rule over the world. Rule over human beings. But nowadays, they've lost it. Sorry. Even United Arab Emirates is smart enough to know that their Allah cannot save them from the world that is coming. They know it. And that's why they've built the best mall, the best skiing places, the best stadiums for footballs, for these sports and that sports, best entertainment shopping plazas, And they are now having solar panels all over to run those things because they know that the oil will soon run out. See, if you are not forward looking, you cannot build the future. You cannot build the impossible. If you are looking at yourself, the amount of money you have in your bank account, you are not going to be able to go anywhere. Rene, continue. Continue. I want your contribution. That's why I have you in my life. Continue, my dear. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Got a hard to follow up after that one. <laughs> um, I had to help someone else achieve their goals. Okay. Make sure that you're a person in the right circle. Okay. And believe that it will be just as God said. Okay, listen to this, what she's saying. She is saying that one of the ways for you to achieve your goal is also to find somebody to ally yourself with and help that person to build 
a big dream, a big plan. Right now, am I right in my interpretation? Yes. Okay. By doing that, there will be a sharing of profit. I'm, I'm making what you are saying. But I'm, I'm putting it in the right words. Because you cannot go to just help somebody achieve their goals without you eating their fruit with the person. Yes, it has to be an assignment. It has to be an assignment and it also to have to be, uh, it has to be an assignment and it has to be a profit. There should never be an assignment without a profit. There should never be. Never work for God if he cannot pay you a salary. That's just simply my own understanding of him. Don't go to go and work for God or for Jesus or for the Holy Ghost. If he himself is not ready to take care of you and provide you your physical need, if not, go and do something else until when they are ready. That's just who I am. I don't work for free. There's nothing like I'm doing it for God. God is not working for free in heaven. He has everything. So why should I not have everything? It's as simple as that. Listen, listen, listen to what I'm going to tell you. When you hear me use the word aggressive, it's not violence. I'm talking about seizing things, seizing opportunities, jumping into opportunities. That's how the that's the way Jesus uses that word. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been coming in his violence or being shaken. It has been shaken. The King James Version says, suffered violence. People have been shaking it. And then the smart ones are seizing her. That's the way it is put in the Greek. The wise ones are seizing her. The aggressive ones, the violent ones are seizing her. That has to do with, he said, when it comes to money and fame and real estate and the big things, he has to do with sort of violence in you. It's not, it's not making money doesn't come by being a small-minded person. There's a place where you need to be a little bit violent. Not physical aggression, but intellectual and spiritual aggression to get what you want. Okay, let me ask you a question so that you can know that you are not all that very gentle. 90% of all the food you eat on a daily basis is by violence. I hope you know that. I hope you, you are aware that 90% or more of the food you eat on a daily basis, you didn't go to go and beg the cow that you want to slaughter them so as to have meat or the pigs or the lamb or the goats or the chicken or the turkey that you ate yesterday. I hope they were very happy to be killed for your Thanksgiving dinner. I hope they are really very happy to get killed. You seize them by force. The fish you are eating is by aggression, is by force. The fish did not invite you to come into their world and come and make those mothers not to take care of their babies. Or those fathers and you seize them by force and a wandering deer or moose or elk that has been separated from his family his children are crying wondering when is mama gonna come back and bow drop dead and they pick the mom and go and eat I hope they they were praying and inviting you to the bush or to the forest to come and get them I mean, apart from, apart from the plants and the fruits, which I, I, I understand why that was original fruit of human beings was plants and fruits and nuts. 
Why? Because when you when you cut, they continue to grow. When you pluck the fruit, it continues to grow. You don't kill them. That's why fruits and plants and nuts are human being original food. The meats and other things are aggression. They have different forms of aggression. Rene, continue, my dear. Um, that was pretty much it. Okay. But if I if I can say one thing, Bishop, okay, I'm shooting from I'm shooting from the heart. The first time I went into business for myself, I did not. I prayed about the success of the business. I wanted it to profit, but to be totally upfront, I did not include God in what I was doing. I thought He was there. I thought he was well aware of what I was doing, and I thought he would bless it. But instead, I failed. And I'm not one of those who, I'm not afraid to try again. In fact, all I'm waiting on is the capital to start again. Because I believe in learning from failure and not so much success. Okay? Um, I was in the wrong circle with people who were business-minded, but they were not the right people for me. And that's why I'm shooting from the hip when I say um, work, do something every day to work to perfect the gift, because I truly believe Satan has to be anointed at what he does as well. And when I say work to perfect the gift every day, do something every day to keep that dream or that promise top of mind so that you don't forget the promise. And when I say where it's not me, but it's him working through me, it's fun when the Holy Spirit does something through you to the point where it's no longer work, but it is enjoyment and it is fun. And it becomes easy. Something difficult for others becomes very easy for you because he's working through you and you're being guided by heaven telling you what to do, what to say. You know what I'm I don't know if you understand where I was coming from. Number one, what you do every day, you become a master of it. That was what I was saying. Either what you do become a lifestyle or it's just a role you play. That's number one. Number two, there is a part of us that it is God's guidance. There is a big part of us that is us as human that has to lead the way. When God is leading the way, you lead. That's just the way it is. If many of you were born in the times of David, fear will have killed you. Now let me share something that all of you need to know before I leave this conference tonight. I'm going to leave you with this, and you're going to think about it if you are serious. Why is it that after God has made all the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joseph, all this, up to the time of Moses. He's promised them that the land of Canaan is theirs. He's going to drive out those who were original inhabitants of the land and give that land to them. Why didn't God go to create a new Eden for them? Something that is just theirs. Because you know when somebody's thing is going to be taken away from the person and given to you, it's going to cause warfare. I'm trying to position you to know what I've been saying tonight. I'm talking to all of you, not to Rene. Many 
many things you want in life is there in other people's hand. And you're going to know how to negotiate, or how to fight, how to take what you want by force. Our forefathers in the Bible, they went to war to get what they wanted. There were things they got by relationship with other people who already got those things, like the pharaohs or like the kings of the Philistines. Or an angel showing Jacob what to do. Not that an angel came and gave Jacob money, but God sent an angel to tell Jacob what to do when he wakes up, how to begin to increase his flock. You are the one to do it. The majority of the work is going to come from you, not from God. Why did Abraham have to fight? Why did Jacob go to war to get to grab land? Moses, David, etc. God has said he's given them the land. Why didn't God just introduce a plague of sickness that wiped them out? Say diarrhea, a mighty diarrhea come upon everybody and they shoot and all of them died. Or God just sent a blizzard to wipe them out. Like he wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah with, with stones, asphalt falling. He leveled the place. Why didn't God do that? Why didn't God send angels to come and fight for them to get the land he's given to them? I, want, I just want you to get it clear how things work. Because it's easy to talk about God coming to do it for us. I don't. Why God has said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the land that, look, you see all these people? They already have chariots of irons and instruments of death. They already developed civilization. I'm going to give you their land. I'm going to give you their houses. I'm going to give you their children. I'm going to give you their wives. I'm going to give you everything that they own. But you're going to go and fight for it. Did you hear when God said to Moses, all those people who have never seen war should be sent to war? <laughs> That's why there is a place for faith. In fact, faith and warfare, they go together. We are not talking of just prayer warfare. Mind warfare. In fact, the real warfare is mind aggression. People want to conquer your mind first, then they can conquer your body. And then conquer your money. And keep you where you shouldn't be. God, God told Moses, those who have not gone to war should be sent to war to go and get the land. See, God has given you the land, but you are going to fight to get the land. <laughs> Think about that. God said, I've given you the food, but you are going to look for the food. I've given you the money, and you are going to go and find the money. Go and work for it. Go and exercise your brain and your physical energies to get it. I've given you a garden of Eden, he said to Adam and Eve, but you have to keep it. In order to eat of it, you have to be a gardener. You have to take care of it. See how it is? So why do you, wanna, why do you want God to do for you what he has thrown back to you already? Simply step into the world and do what you're going to do. See, we've become too religious for God. I'm serious. We have become too godly for God. And that is why foreigners will come into your country. Two, three days they set up businesses. And you are there praying to God. And after prayer, you go into their shop and buy coffee, buy your toiletries, 
your sanitary things, buy your food from them. So who is going to buy from you and your children and bring you some money? When, are, when, when is your religion, your Christianity, and your quest for the best thing going to merge? When is it going to merge? When is it going to become one and the same thing, a lifestyle? When are you going to know when you are to wait for God? Or wait on God and when God is waiting for you. I want you to be aware of these things. God has given them the land. They are going to fight to get the land that God has given to them. Are you aware that when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, we had nothing gross in the wilderness. God gave them the food of angels' manna, brought quails to fell so that they can get it, boil it, cook it, fry it, bake it for themselves and have meat. But immediately they entered into the fertile land, God withdrew the manna. Are you aware of that? He stopped the birds from coming. He stopped them from eating the food of angels. Now they have to go and plant. They have to go and till the ground and plant for themselves. It's there in the Bible. God did not continue to feed them. Heavenly welfare stopped. Are you aware of it? The welfare of heaven stopped. God didn't give them no more manna, not for one day till today. He did not give them any more meat till today. Why? They have to go and hunt for their own meat. They have to go and plant their own crops. So what happened? What happened to us when we were growing up? We, have a, we had our own gardens. That's why I cannot wait to move to the mission house. Because Every spring, I want to have at least two, three acres for a garden, a big garden. I want to have some animals, raise them. What happened to that lifestyle? What happened to the lifestyle of going out there and getting what you want instead of kneeling to pray? You pray to get power to go and solve problems. If God did not come to fight for the Israelite to get a land, how, how do you think he's coming to fight for you to get a land? If you are not willing to read up and know how the laws of your city operate, well then why do you want to live in it? Before you start any business, why not read up, study, spend like a year just to study everything you can find in that area quietly so that when and ask questions and get all the information are you aware that before a young eagle leave his parent they will allow that young eagle that teenager to live with them for a little while but not sleep not sleep in the same nest be sleeping on top of the tree all by itself whether there is rain or whether there is sunshine, it doesn't matter to the parent. They kick him out. The parent will kick that, e that eagle out. They will continue to bring it food, but they want it to spend time to master its environment so that it can start hunting for itself. Are you aware of that? And when once it masters that environment, they cease to have anything to do with it. You're on your own. And if eagles do that to their kids, why don't we do that to us?
God wants you to be self-sufficient, to be able to provide for yourself. Because in as much as there are places for heavenly welfare, there's also places where it will not come. There are times you ask God to heal you, and God doesn't want to spend his energy healing you, because he knows you have a physical doctor for you to go to. He's already given them the gift to make you healthy. These are hard lessons for us. Because, you see, God respects you. God honors you. That's why he made you. He likes you. But he placed you here for you to be in charge. So stop giving God your job to do for you. Start being in charge of things. Stop, stop looking up to God to manage your money. Begin to manage your money. Stop looking up to God to give you a spouse. Go out and look and see whether what you see, you naturally, you like it. Because what we've been doing has been trying to manage people and tolerate people. In the name of God said so, I receive a prophecy. I don't believe. When it comes to certain things, business, marriage, education, having children and so on, get God out of it. God wants you to use your intelligence. Let me show you how Rebecca was got a husband. It did not come through prophecy or through prayers. Eliezer discovered that Rebecca was a, a sensitive woman. You don't need to tell Rebecca what to do. She knew exactly what to do without you telling Rebecca. Can you fetch me water to drink, Eliezer said. Eliezer did not say to God, the girl whom your Holy Ghost tell me that that is the girl. That's going to be the girl for Isaac. I want you guys to get this right. Eliezer did not say, the one that I heard the Rema word, a prophecy, that that is going to be Isaac's wife. That's the one girl. He said, the one that has the gift of sensitivity. The gift of sensitivity is not given by God. It is either you have it or you don't have it. Are you sensitive to this present world, how things are done? Eliezer did not say, give me a prophecy who it is. Make me to have discernment of spirit. No. The one who, when I say give me a drink, will be smart enough to know that it's not just I alone that is thirsty, but the men who are with me and the animal that are with me are thirsty. And she said, not just to you, I will also give water to your animals. Say, that is the one. We are going about churches looking for prophecy to have a husband, looking for prophecy to have a business, and you are not asking God for sensitivity. Somebody who is sensitive to your needs, your dreams, and you are sensitive because we want somebody to be sensitive to our dreams, our plans, our plots, but we do not want to be sensitive to them. That's why it's not working for you. You want somebody who is coming to pour money on you because you're a wife or pour money on you because you're a husband and take care of you. And you sit down there eating and drinking and having sex and smoking and enjoying life. Oh, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight because your penny is not needed. That's why it's the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our sight because they didn't ask for your money. When they ask for your money, it's no longer the Lord's doing. You become a devil. You begin to quarrel. You send that idiot to college. Now it's time for the idiot to send you to college and he's now quarreling with you. And that's what we've been doing in religion. As long as the other person is bringing the money, we love it. When you be asked to give the money, you don't. That's why many, many people in this world 
will continue to have the voice until they learn this lesson. They will continue to have their businesses fold up until they learn the lesson that I've just spoken about. It's the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our sight. We clap. Miracle. Hallelujah. And when Eliezer went to the well, there was a girl coming to fetch water. And Eliezer said, Hi, hi, sweetheart. I'm thirsty. Please, can you draw water for me to drink? I came on a long journey. She said, yes, I see that you came on a long journey. Oh, I will do everything that I can do. I will give you water to drink. I'll also bring water and give to your men who came with you. And I'll give water to your animals too. Eliezer knew that is somebody who is called a responsible person. God wants you to marry a responsible person. God does not want you to marry a prophesying, tongue-talking person. Are you listening to me tonight, wherever you are? How many of you are listening? You can press that sex so that I can hear you shout. I can hear you shout. Many of you want to pity. You want to pity a woman. You want to pity a man. Somebody that doesn't want to become anything in life. You want to pity them. Because they can sex good. Because they can do this good. Anybody who cannot make money. Anybody who cannot manage money. Should not be part of your entourage should not be part of your circle. Anybody who doesn't know how to use their gift and make money, you let them go. Kai! Hallelujah. If everybody were like that, how would have they been able to provide for Jesus? Look at the names of the women who provided for Jesus and the men who provided for Jesus. They were all wealthy people. There was no poor person there. And we think that being poor means that you are holy. Being poor means that everybody should leave you. So that you don't, you don't rob your poverty on the rest of the people. <laughs> Anne Marie, stop laughing on this video. Anne, stop laughing. Rene, don't laugh on this video. This is on this broadcast. It's not acceptable. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to conferences to look for prophecy on the kind of job we should do, on the kind of man or woman you should marry. Are you serious? Elias did not look for that. He asked for just one thing. Is that person sensitive to my needs? And that's it. I'm not talking about people who want to do one-time thing for you, for you to think that they really, they are interested in you, they really like you. You do not know that they are doing that thing in order to, to get their, their butt through the door. When once they get their butt through the door, they don't do those things anymore. People that you, you get into your life, they come and clean your house for one day, they cannot do that anymore. They buy you something for one day, they don't buy you anymore. They just want to use that to get you. And then you are the one who start giving them money. People have learned. There are a lot of crafty sons of darkness who have learned how to use money to get themselves in so that they can get, because they know you have more money than them. You have more things than they do. And they come and buy you flour, buy you chocolate, buy you bal. I'm better than chocolate and flowers and cakes. What I'm looking for is far more bigger than flowers and chocolate and cakes. Are you listening to me? It's far more better than anything. What I'm looking for is so big. <sighs> That's how you should be thinking. Not people who come and do one, one little thing for you, tiny little things, and you think they really are interested in you. They, they, they have the gift of sensitivity. No. They have the gift of pranks. They are pricks. They have the gift of manipulation <laughs> and lies. You are going to be the next pimp for them. That's where you need the gift of sensitivity to know those who are coming. To try to lure you so that they can get their butt through, through the door. 
and then stay there and then retire from their job, retire from everything and sit down to eat. Victoria, are you listening to this tonight? This is heavy. Oh, yeah. If I ever catch you trying to pity any man or woman, I'm coming to California. Okay. You are not called on this earth to be a Father Christmas or a Mother Christmas. You're called here to love yourself first and to protect your interests. Because when, when there, there are certain good things you do for people and people will be laughing at you because they know that they are simply taking advantage of you. They take that for a weakness. Don't let people take you for a weakness. It's not fair. If people can take advantage of you, they will never respect you. Is there anyone who have, who have something else to add to this? You've learned that even if God has given you something, you have to go and fight to get it. Let me tell you, every good thing will come through warfare. You're going to do warfare. It's possible that next year convention, when we are going to have the big open convention, is going to be about spiritual warfare. People are coming to do warfare. Because I don't think we've done that before in a convention. We are coming to do warfare. We are coming to fast and to do warfare. Because there are things that has to be broken down so that you can get up and move. Eternal Father, we ask you for the Holy Ghost so that we can do great things because you are already there for us. Since you are for us, who can be against us? Therefore, we can venture into life and do mighty things. Amen. Now, let me share something with you. Let me share something with you all. Tomorrow night, we are going to do something special for ourselves. Wherever you are in the world, uh, was it last week we light a, we, we did lit a candle for Jesus? Yes. Tomorrow night, Saturday, at the same time, is a service that has to do with you. It's about self-talk. Please bring a candle because you are going to light a candle for yourself. You've been lighting candles for other people's bad days. You've been lighting candles for this or for that. But tomorrow night, you are going to celebrate yourself. Yay! So tomorrow night, we are going to be doing a service of self-celebration. It's not a service for other people to celebrate you. It is you that is going to celebrate yourself. Because your passion is going to be given back and your fire is going to return. I will see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Yeah. And dear Hallelujah. Father, dear Father, what we have done here tonight must be blessed by you and must be paid for highly. Because this is how the preaching of the gospel comes with power and with might. And with the anointing. Amen. Amen. <laughs>